Hi everyone, here we are once again. It's time for our encouraging words together. This is our chance to pause wherever we are right now and just seek the Lord with one heart, to lean into his goodness, to trust in his love, to share with him the concerns of our heart, to listen to his word, to believe it, to look for ways to put it in, into practice. And as we submit to the Lord and trust him, there is always hope, encouragement, even peace to be found. Yes, even right now today. Thanks for tuning in together. I want to share a verse with you in just a moment from the book of the Bible that we know as Isaiah. And Isaiah lived very, during a very turbulent time in the history of Israel. They were continually being attacked by surrounding nations. That's, uh, of course, maybe not unlike today. But not only were they getting attacked from without, there was all kinds of internal conflict as well. During that time in the history of Israel, um, the nation had been divided into two kingdoms, a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. And after the time of David and his son Solomon, um, when... Um, the next generation came into power, there was a great separation and a revolt that took place. And in the northern kingdom, none of the kings in the time that followed for generations, not a single one of them honored God. They all went astray. They kind of formed their own quasi-religion. They started worshiping golden calves and then other um, objects and, and even other gods. And, um, and they really fell away from the Lord. And in the southern kingdom, it was kind of a mixed bag. Often there were kings that loved God and did their best to serve him. And then sometimes there would be kings who would not do that. And um, in the southern kingdom, that's where the capital city was, the temple was. It's where people came to worship. And so not only were both kingdoms being regularly attacked um, from outside forces, there was all this squabbling between them. And really hard times. And during the ministry of Isaiah, roughly 700, a little over 700 years before the time of Christ, the northern kingdom fell to the Assyrians. They were conquered. So there was great heartache and turmoil. Things were not looking good for the people. And the southern kingdom, you could see the writing on the wall. It would take maybe another few generations, but eventually they would go on to be conquered as well. There were, a lot, there were lots and lots of just difficult situations, lots of turmoil, lots of just hardships in the society. And rather than seek the Lord, rather than repent of their ways, both kingdoms continued to fall deeper, deeper into their own selfishness and self-focus. And so when we read Isaiah, it is astounding then to see that not only are there places where Isaiah calls the people to turn to God, but there are also places where the prophet gives tremendous hope for the future. They needed that hope because looking at the situation as it was in their time, it did not seem very hopeful. It was pretty bleak. And often we will go through times in our own lives, situations around the world, relationships that we're in, obstacles that we personally face, you know, whether that's worldwide or local. There is often experiences where we start to think, I don't know the way forward. And it's, it can be hard for many to hold on to hope. In Isaiah chapter 59, towards the end, God promises that he will redeem the people. They have no way. It's gotten so bad, there's no way they can resolve it. There's no hope that they're going to be able to fix this on their own. So God promises to send them a redeemer. And then in chapter 60, he calls the nation to rise up, to put their hope in him, to walk with confidence in their, their step, to, to understand that God is for them and not against them. And he makes this promise to the people of God. This is Isaiah chapter 60 in verse 3. The prophet says, Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. 
it's really quite a powerful statement because everything seemed to be going dark. Everything seemed to be cloudy. Their future seemed hopeless. And all the surrounding kings were attacking Israel and looking for Israel's destruction during that time. And God says, basically, it's all going to reverse. Instead of the nation feeling like it's in this deep, dark, and dank hole, it's going to become like a bright sun. It's uh, the, the, their, their situation's going to reverse and become hopeful to the point where all those nations and surrounding groups who were once on the attack will now look to that nation as a place of hope. They'll come to Israel's light. Those kings will come to the brightness of what God is doing in that place. Of course, ultimately, we see that as a prophetic declaration that would serve the coming Messiah, the coming of Jesus, who brings light not only to the Jews, but to all the world, every person, no matter who we are. If we will look to the Lord Jesus, our fortunes can change. They can be reversed. We can leave the darkness and despair and hopelessness of this world and enter into true peace and true joy and a great expectation about the days yet to come, knowing that God is for us and not against us, that his plans are always good. It doesn't mean life is never hard. It doesn't mean that we never go through those hard times. It does mean we don't have to go through them alone. The Lord loves us. And he is a redeemer. He has sent Jesus to rescue the world. And if we will put our hope in him, if we will turn toward the Lord and reach out to him, we can enter into that new life that he offers. I know life can be sometimes hard. And if you're facing situations right now that just seem scary, maybe you're dealing with a uh, uh, a medical diagnosis that's daunting. Maybe you're in a time of sickness. Maybe you're feeling weak. Maybe you're just looking out at the world and it would be so easy to just give in to fear and worry and concern. I'm not suggesting to any of us that we bury our head, it's heads in the sand and pretend like life doesn't get hard. But I am saying that we should look up to see that there are answers and hope beyond this temporary moment. This life will change. God and his love and his goodness, he never changes. And we can put our hope in him. Nations, God said, will come to your light. And I believe that as we persevere and trust the Lord, even in times of hardship, others will be drawn. They get to see as we persevere and trust, the, trust God and hold on to peace and joy despite the difficulties of this life. We begin in our, in our very being to become like a light that shows other people they can trust in the Lord too. Arise, shine, your light has come. That's what Isaiah said in the first part of this chapter and that others will be drawn to the brightness of what he's doing. Let God touch other people as we hold fast to him and trust that he is holding fast to us even in the most difficult of circumstances. May that hope fill us each afresh even right now today. And with that thought, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this great promise and this is just one of many that you made to your people to help sustain them in those moments when they couldn't tell where hope was going to, uh, where it was coming from or when it was going to arrive. We often go through experiences like that, Lord, and it can feel overwhelming. So for anyone listening and joining in with us in this moment, Lord, whether watching from their, their TV, uh, the, the television in their apartment, or watching online through their computer or phone, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help us to trust you that we would lay our concerns before you and that we would hold fast to your promise to make things right. Even as Jesus, you came to be the redeemer of the world, come and pour out that confidence in us. As we trust in you, may we experience your eternal resurrection life that raises us above the hardships of this life. And they are many and they are serious. But I thank you, Lord, that these circumstances do not have the final say, even when they feel so devastating. You have the final say, and our hope is in you. Bring comfort, 
bring healing, bring redemption, bring restoration. Strengthen our hearts. May we feel the encouragement of your spirit as we put our hope and trust in you, Lord, as we turn to you and commit ourselves to you and to your ways. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Oh, it's always so good to spend this moment. My heart gets encouraged every time, even as I'm talking to you and and just reflecting on his word. There's just a strengthening that comes because God's word is, is, is breathed by him. His spirit rests on it. And as we put it into practice, as we believe, as we trust him, there is hope in the presence of Jesus as he fills our hearts anew. May he fill you afresh, even right now. Thanks so much for tuning in. Here on channel 2493 at Friendship Village, we show you these videos three times a day. This video will air at 4.30 in the afternoon. It'll repeat at 8 o'clock at night and then once again 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. We do that every day, Monday through Friday. You can always watch this video and any of the others that we put out online on YouTube. Simply go to our YouTube page at youtube.com backslash the at symbol then FVC Chaplain, and that'll take you to our YouTube page where you'll find these encouraging word videos under the video tab, but you'll also find our services, our memorials, our Bible studies, our hymn sings, and more under the live tab. Be sure to click on any and all of that and let uh, our gatherings be of encouragement to you. If uh, you're watching online, and if you know someone that could use some strength today, consider sending them the link to today's video. Otherwise, you can click on the circle right here to subscribe to these videos online, and uh, which all that means is they'll show up in your YouTube feed when you sign into YouTube. These videos will show up there when they're new. You can also click on the box below to see any of these encouraging word videos in our history. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day in the Lord, and I'll see you next time.